Thank you, everyone. Uh, Joe kind of fucked me. Um, I was just gonna come out here and name birds, and you guys hit all of them, so uh, I guess I'll stick with the premise. Never have I ever owned a pair of binoculars. Uh, it's a lot of bird-related material. I hope you guys are okay with this. Uh, any, any bird watchers in the audience? Do you know that there are uh, red-tailed hawks in Tompkins Square Park? No. You didn't know that. Do you know their names? No. Are the pita chips? Oh, good. The pita chips are still there. There's Upper East Side ones that you know. <laughs> Personally, sir, I'm friends with the Upper East Side ones. No, there's, uh, there's these two uh, red-tailed hawks in Tompkins Square Park, and I know that because one day I was uh, in the park, and there was a group of, uh, let's say mostly men, in khaki, uh, all pointing their uh, cameras at the trees. And so I thought it was like paparazzi and there were like Kardashians in the trees. <laughs> so I was like, what are they pointing their phones at? And uh, it turns out it was one of these red-tailed hawks that live in Tompkins Square Park. And uh, I made friends with a bird watcher, a bird man, uh, <laughs> a, a bird fan. And uh, he explained to me that there are two hawks in the park uh, he let me use his binoculars, but he didn't uh, take them off of his neck. <laughs> Has anyone gotten this close with a bird fan? Has anyone? He kept them on his neck, and I looked through them, and we got really close. And he told me there are two birds in the park, and we were seeing one, and the other one was uh, at the nest guarding the eggs from the squirrels. To which I said, fuck squirrels! <laughs> and he got very upset at that. And in one motion, yanked the binoculars out of my hands and walked away. And I lost my only friend I've ever had. <laughs> this bird fan. Which, uh, which shocked me because I thought it was birds or squirrels, right? Like I didn't think you could like both. I thought it was one or the other. I thought we were choosing sides in this. And let's be honest, squirrels are just rich rats. There's no reason to like squirrels. All right. Have you guys ever watched, have you guys ever watched Pigeons Fuck? And how many people have lived in New York for about 10 years to that is your hobby? I've lived in New York now over 10 years and my favorite thing in the world to do is watch Pigeons <laughs> Fuck. It doesn't happen often. Usually you watch the mating process. Do you know the mating process of pigeons? It's amazing. The male pigeon puffs out his chest and kind of chases the female pigeon around. And nine times out of 10, the female pigeon flies away. And you get to watch the male pigeon deflate. It's, oh, it's so beautiful. Never have I ever, ooh, water. Um, Never have I ever been in a long-term relationship. Now, you might be asking, what is long-term? And, uh, hey, that's a good question. <laughs> I was just in a two-month relationship, which I know does not mean long-term. Uh, she broke up with me on Sunday via text message. Yeah, in her defense, I did have the flu, so I couldn't meet her in person. Please, all the sympathy you have for me. <laughs> Please, as much as you can. She broke up with me via text and she sent me like a persuasive essay of a text message and I had a fever and I didn't respond. So I'd like to respond to it to you guys <laughs> with a novel I wrote when I received it called In My Defense. <laughs> and to the subject of you were on edibles a lot In my defense, we were at an indoor water park. I'm going to be on edibles for that. That's why I have edibles, right? Like she claimed in this long, long essay breaking up with me, she claimed 
she felt bad that I did edibles because she felt like it made her feel boring. And I didn't respond to her, but I wanted to say, it's not that because you're boring, it just enhanced the experience, right? Like, I don't think the new Avengers movie is going to be boring, but I ain't seeing that shit sober, right? Like, I'm not an idiot. I do drugs occasionally a lot. Um, like, right now, I have a day job. Uh, I'm a furniture salesman, and I've been trying to get fired, so what I've been doing is I've been getting high every day before work. And I thought that would help me get fired, but it turns out that just makes me a better furniture salesman. <laughs> if you guys are being high is the best way to sell a couch. It makes it so much easier. Like every day I'm just sitting in the showroom, stoned out of my mind. People come in, I'm just like, you gotta try this. <laughs> and they do. And I've gotten promotion after promotion. I can't get fired. I just keep being a better furniture salesman. My boss heard this joke and the response was, if you can do it, good for you. And I'm like, are you challenging me right now? I'll do acid and come to work, I don't give a fuck. I'll turn this showroom into Pee Wee's Playhouse. I'll really go for the gusto. <laughs> the Upper East Side Bird fan is a uh, big fan of Pee Wee. Absolutely. Right on. Yeah. Do you know Paul Rubens personally, or just the birds? I watched his show on acid with friends. You could have just said, I watched his show with friends. And we smoked for word of the day. Oh, so you're on acid. Hold on! Let us get the picture! You and your friends, I assume last weekend... Several years ago, we're like, guys, you know how we've been bored recently? <laughs> I got an idea. Let's drop acid and watch Pee Wee's Playhouse, and then let's smoke at the word of the day. Yes. Cool, man. Not so good. <laughs> yeah, when you say it out loud, it's not as cool as... <laughs> Saturdays just fuck. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would also say your 40s pretty fucked, but yeah, your Saturdays also. I did acid once. A couple months ago, I did acid for the first time, and boy, are my arms still snakes. It's the acid joke I wrote while on acid. Pretty good, right? Pretty fun. Uh... When I was, I was saying, it's crazy that I couldn't get fired from my job because this is true. My dad got fired from his job for making a joke, and this is the joke that got my dad fired. I should say, my dad professionally dressed up like a shark at an aquarium. That was my dad's job. The guy on acid watching Pee Wee is laughing hysterically at that. And the rest of you can too. It's a funny job <laughs> for a person to have. He entertained children. It wasn't like a low budget aquarium where they had people in costumes in the tanks. <laughs> He was Sharky the Shark, and he walked around, and he entertained children. And this is the joke that got my dad fired. Someone asked him, Frank, can I get you anything? And my dad lifted up his shark head and went, yeah, a gun to put me out of my misery. <laughs> I agree with the guy on acid. That is a funny joke. They called the cops on him. They fired him on the spot. Which upsets me because I thought we all made suicide jokes at work. I thought that was part of every office place. Also, he didn't have a gun. He was asking for one. And he had fins for hands. He couldn't have pulled the trigger if he wanted to. And to me, if the 65-year-old man who dressed up like a shark for a living isn't comically suicidal, I'd be way more concerned, right? Like, wouldn't that be worse? If they're like, Frank, can I get you anything? And he was just like, nope. I have everything I need. <laughs> Bring me the children. <laughs> like we got a fire sharky. I know Joe asked a lot of questions of you, but I have one more. Um, does anyone here know what the E in Chuck E. Cheese stands for? <laughs> no? Pee Wee Acid Guy, no? I know, kids not that age, sorry. Kids, not that age. Sorry. I've never been to Chuck E. Cheese. 
Never have I ever been to Chuck E. Cheese. I, yeah, that's probably for the best, sir. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. You're a regular at Dave & Buster's, though, right? No. No? no. Man, you got to get your friends together, do acid, and go to Dave & Buster's. All right. It's an idea for the future. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, a fun piece of knowledge that you might not know. Uh, clearly, never have I ever known what the E in Chuck E. Cheese stands for is for everyone. I know what it is. The E in Chuck E. Cheese stands for entertainment. I looked that up. <laughs> You were guessing every E word, and you're like, it might be entertainment. <laughs> Chuck Entertainment Cheese, which means his full name is Charles Entertainment Cheese, <laughs> which is my favorite name of all time. I don't know why they haven't rebranded that restaurant. We would all go. Are you going to Charles Entertainment Cheeses? Yes, I am. So I had to know, it was late at night, I had to know why was he named Charles Entertainment Cheese? Right? Most cartoon animals that I know, their last name is the animal that they are, not the thing they like the most. Also, what parent names a child with a middle and name of entertainment? So I looked it up. And what I found was a children's book published by Chuck E. Cheese. So this is the official canon, right? This is the official backstory of Chuck E. Cheese. And the book begins by saying, no one knows why he was named Charles Entertainment Cheese. <laughs> And I was like, well, that's all I was looking for, but okay. I'm going to keep reading. And I went on to read it, and it goes on to say, no one knows why he was named that, because he is an orphan. Yeah, that's how the book starts. That's how it starts. It goes on to say, uh, because he was an orphan, he also does not know when his birthday is. So he has never had a birthday party. Which is why he loves celebrating the birthdays of other children. Remember how happy we were at Charles Entertainment Cheese and how bummed out we are now? Fuck you, Chuck E. Cheese, right? Like, there's no need for this much tragedy. He does not need this much depth. He doesn't need a tragic backstory. He's a cartoon rat that owns an arcade, right? He doesn't need sadness in his life. If they're gonna go this orphan route, he should be playing acoustic guitar while everyone eats soup. That should be the restaurant. And every night he's like, I don't know when my birthday is, I'm an orphan. <laughs> Two, three, four, right? But it blows my mind because I've never heard a tragic backstory for any other commercial character, right? Like, I've never heard that Captain Crunch was a POW. I've never heard that. <laughs> and while he was a prisoner, he was fed sandpaper, and that's why his cereal is the way that it is. <laughs> like, it makes sense, but there's no need. All right, I'm Robert Entertainment Dean. Good night, everybody.